Hi, I'm Susan Winter for SusanWinter.net. And if you know my work, you know it's very positive. You know I talk about love, relationships, how to get the kind of love you want. But there are times that I also need to include exit strategies. And I need to advise you on the other side of love because love doesn't always work out and it's not always clean cut and wonderful. There are times that we have breakups and they're bad and they hurt and they hurt so badly. And the behavior that we've received from a partner can be so horrific that we find that we want revenge. And why do we want revenge? Because we feel that the playing field has been so uneven. There's cruelty that happens because people are stupid and they have limited skill sets. Then there's another form of cruelty. It's in a smaller segment of the population, but it does exist. And there are those individuals who enjoy delight in hurting others. It is a sad commentary, but if you find yourself in a relationship that has come to this point, you want something that's going to make you feel better. Now, I have looked at all the different ways to get out of this problem, and I came across something through trial and error, as we all learn, many years ago. And I discovered the person that I could not extract myself from, meaning I couldn't stop the mental obsession. The relationship was over. I had to come to the point where I realized the person who was so wonderful that I'd fallen in love with through all my effort and all my trying was never coming back. And instead, I was left with the pain of what was happening and I needed to get out. And like the animal that will chew their leg off to get out of the leg hole trap, I knew for my better self I needed to get out. But I couldn't stop thinking about it, ruminating about it. What happened? Thoughts of anger, thoughts of longing, thoughts of, you know, I wish that he'd get the justice he deserves. I wish that he'd feel what he's done to me. Now, every time I did that, what was really happening? One, every time I had a thought, positive or negative, I was keeping myself hooked in that cycle of pain. And the secondary part, which is the key to getting free, is my thought was keeping his power alive. Meaning that every time we think about that person, it's as though we have this portal that's coming out of us with our most vibrant life force, that we are feeding the very person that we consider to be our enemy. Our thought is keeping them propped up in their power. And every thought, every moment that we ruminate about it, they get stronger and bigger, living on our energy as if we haven't given them enough of ourselves already. And while this may sound rudimentary, I promise you the most powerful technique is to mentally discipline yourself to cut that cord of thought. It's like the puppy that keeps trying to slide out of the back door. You know, it's an impulse, but it is not a productive one. Every time you catch yourself, good or bad, thinking any thought about your partner, you stop. You cut the cord in the knowledge that you are feeding the very beast that you do not want to feed. This is such a powerful technique. We know that thoughts are things. Science is proving every day different terms and analogies for what technically happens. But people can indeed live upon the energy of our thoughts when the very thing we're trying to do is reinforce ourselves and cut them out of our lives. I remember finally coming to the point where I knew I'd gotten this guy out of my mind and because I was feeling good. Now, I wasn't technically thinking about him. I was all the way in Australia with my friends on a, on a beautiful boat looking over the water and suddenly I was present to life. And I suddenly realized that I felt good. For the first time in months, I felt free and I was enjoying my life. What do you think happened? I get a text message from him. You know why? He felt the absence of my energy. All those miles, he could feel like a junkie that wasn't getting his fix, that he was going down. He'd been living on the valuable energy that was my life force through thought. 
Now, you may not think this is enough. You may want life to come in as the universal judge and uh, exact the kind of karma that they need. But I promise you, when you free yourself and release yourself from this process, you will witness a force that happens when you pull yourself out of needing to create that karma for them and let life do it, it orchestrates a plan that will blow your mind. I have seen this happen over and over again with my clients and even with myself. It's as though I look at the people coming in to create these things and if I'd paid central casting to hire people to say things and do things, I couldn't have had a better result. When you extract yourself, from the vengeance, from feeling that you need to be vindictive, and from the thought of this person. That's when they deflate and life intercedes on your behalf. I want you to be happy, but mostly I want you to be free. And you need to move on to somebody who does understand how to love you in a way that's productive. Revenge, I promise you, is a game for amateurs. You want a sophisticated technique and you want the real revenge? Cut the cord on the mental connection. Quit feeding the beast and let life do what it's going to do and you will indeed witness miracles in front of your eyes and you'll be playing clean on your end. That's the reward. I wish you the very best and mostly I wish you love and peace of mind. Susan Winter for SusanWinter.net and if you prefer to listen to this information on AudioCast, check out my iTunes page, The Susan Winter Show. Thank you.